Hey YouTube, we got a full house here to talk about today. And before I get started on what I'm gonna talk about today, I'm gonna let you know that every single firearm that you see here in front of you is not loaded. And we are clear to make this video. If and when I pick them up during this video, I will show you that they're not loaded. So what we're gonna talk about today is firearm people. And what is a firearm person? Well, I think of a firearm person who has a hobby of shooting and collecting or whatever you want to call it with firearms. <clears throat> and amongst the firearm community, I've noticed over the years that none of them seem to get along. None of them will agree with the other one. If somebody has something or says something they don't agree with, they're the most aggressive people I've ever seen. And... I got a few examples of firearms here that I'm going to talk about while I talk about these type of people. So basically all we're going to deal with today is handguns. And when you deal with handguns, you, I mean, these people, they're, they're unreasonable. Sometimes you have your, you have your plastic polymer crowd and they don't get along with the 1911 crowd. You have your target shooters, you have your collectors, you have your serious trainers, people that actually train and use firearms, and you have the people that buy all the accessories and don't know anything about firearms. They just know that it looked cool, so they bolted it to their gun. And we'll try and cover all those here in this little discussion. So, basically, a firearm person can be any of us. And if you're watching this video, you're probably a firearm person. But next time you get into a discussion with somebody, I want you to think about some of the topics that I bring up today. So we're going to start off with the um, 1911 crowd. And we have a couple 1911s here in front of us. And 1911 people are in a league of their own. <laughs> I just I don't understand them sometimes. And they'll buy a 1911 and... All they will do is talk about how their 1911 is the greatest one ever. And if anybody else says anything other than that, then they really go off on other people. So what they have here is you got your top of the line 1911 here. This is probably the most, the most well-built, most expensive one that you could probably buy. This is a Wilton Combat Professional. This one's the tactical elite with all the bells and whistles on it all the carry cuts all the fluted cylinder and counter suck stuff and me big old magwell on it and everything awesome gun covered all these guns and other videos so we're not going to get too much into them now this is what i would call the pinnacle of a 1911 this is probably the top notch one that you can get now, if you are a 1911 person, you like shooting 1911s, you have to have one of these. You do not, folks. You do not have to go spend $5,000 on a 1911 to be a 1911 person. And if I was shooting this gun at the gun range and somebody walked up next to me and they had a lesser expensive gun, I'm not going to tell them they're stupid. I'm not going to tell them that they made a bad choice. I'm not going to tell them anything because I don't think they made a bad choice. I'm happy to see somebody with a 1911 because I like 1911s. I'll probably start a conversation. How does it shoot? All that kind of stuff. People in the society today cannot do that. They do not have it in them, and I do not understand why. People have a lot of hate built up in them, and I deal with it every single day since I've been doing these YouTube videos. It's unbelievable the amount of the stuff that people write on here. You can say stuff as jokes, whatever have you, and people will not take it as a joke. So when you're in the 1911 crowd, <clears throat> There's also like 1911 collectors and people that buy these things because of what they're worth. This here, I've showed this gun before a couple times. Let me show you this, not loaded. This is a hand built <coughs> Caspian full size government model 1911. This has every bell and whistle you could possibly think on it, and it is a high polished stainless, not nickel. And I had a gunsmith build this to order for me and put everything on it that I wanted. He put all this extended mag release. He did the magwell. It's a, um, I believe this is a Nighthawk magwell. It's got an Ed Brown beaver tail on it. It's got an Ed Brown barrel on it. Just 100%. This is a absolute one of a kind gun right here. And 
a regular 1911 person or a regular firearms person is just right off the street is not going to know what this is. And they're instantly going to say, how much does it cost? Well, who cares what it costs, folks? It doesn't matter. What things cost does not matter. Are you happy with it? Can you shoot it well? It's a tool. Does it, does it handle well? Does it do the job? Now, what are you buying this for? I bought it for taking it to the range. I wanted the full-size stainless uh, 1911 that was built well and very accurate and works very smooth. I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish by getting this gun. Now, if you get your hardcore like Colt 1911 collectors, well, this thing's worthless to them. And they'll tell you all the reasons why this is worthless to them. <clears throat> the regular Wilson Combat people like I just showed you or the Nighthawk people or all that, this is going to be worthless to them because this is a Heinz 57 gun because it was not built in a factory. It doesn't have a certain brand on it and they couldn't resell it. That's ridiculous, folks. This, this gun is every bit, every bit as well made and will perform just as well as this $5,000 Wilson Combat here. And folks, I usually don't discuss prices because prices are irrelevant to me, but I may mention a couple prices in this because this is what this video is about. So this gun was not cheap to build at all. It was not cheap. If I had to sell this gun out on the open market, it'd probably be a tough sell because you're going to have to explain to people what this is. It's going to take a limited audience to understand that this is a hand fit together 1911 with all top quality parts, how smooth it works and how it operates, how what a good a trigger it is or anything. So 1911 people, the bad ones are not going to understand this. The regular polymer people they're not going to understand this they're they're just not going to get it they cannot accept the fact that i'm happy with this because they've never heard of it. it is a caspian frame and caspian slide by the way that's what the frame and slide was built on it's all all one block steel built it's all forged everything now your next crowd that you're going to have is your polymer frame crowd polymer frame crowd are usually the younger crowd and they don't understand anything if they if it's not what they have they're not going to get it so you have your entry level stuff like this taurus right here that i've praised these guns for years this is a little um g3c nine millimeter and this gun is awesome this gun performs well it never malfunctions it's very affordable almost anybody wants to get into firearms can own this gun i mean it's probably the least expensive gun on this table and it's got a really long trigger pull on them. And that's the first thing people are going to start going off on that has something else. Well, folks, what this gun was intended for is to carry. And usually people that are buying this are entry-level people. And they don't need a trigger that goes off at one pound of pull on it. So there's nothing wrong with this. When it goes off, the reset on it, it's just like every other polymer gun. It's exactly the same. It does have a safety on it. A lot of the people that don't like safeties, they go off on that too. Well, don't use it. But don't tell some guy that owns this thing that his gun is stupid or inadequate because it has a safety on it. Don't tell him his gun, him or her, I'm going to keep it... Um, on both sides of the table to tell them that their gun is inadequate because it didn't cost as much as yours cost is irrelevant this gun functions just as well as any gun on this table <coughs> and i have nothing bad to say about it now when you get into your polymer frame people you get into some subcategories of them and I'm going to start off with this Glock right here. This is Glock 43X. The reason I chose this is because this is a Colt following gun. This is the carry 9mm. It's a single stack. Holds 10 rounds. And people love it. And I personally do not understand the infatuation with these. But who am I to go off on somebody for them? But people that have stuff like this, these Glocks, will tell you any other gun is not reliable. Glock perfection or it's nothing. I'll show you close-ups of it. 43X, 9mm. Nothing to really see here, folks. This is the bone stock, 9mm Glock. Now, Glock peak Glocks have always been known to be very reliable. And I, do, I stand behind that. They are reliable. 
They're a little uncomfortable in some people's hands because they have a weird grip angle on them. But if you tell a Glock person that, you, you might as well go shoot their children. <laughs> <clears throat> so it's best just not to say anything at all. If some guy's shooting a Glock next to you, you either like them or you hate them. Or you either like them or you do not like them. Do not go up next to them and tell them what a poor decision they made by going with a Glock. That There's better guns out there. Is there really better guns out there, folks? They all really serve a purpose. Every one of these firearms have a separate purpose, and this one was meant to be carried. And was it meant to do IPA matches? No, it was not. It was meant to be a little carry 9mm for personal protection. Now, you get into another class of people. is a really strong competitor. These are the SIG 320s. Now, Glock people do not like these. And I'm going to tell you that I do like them. And I also like Glocks. Now, in my opinion, this one's got a better trigger than a Glock. And it feels better in your hand than a Glock. Now, does that make it a better gun? It absolutely doesn't. They're both 100% reliable. I think all these guns, all these polymer guns today, for the most part, most of them are reliable. And they all pretty much do the same thing. It's whatever your pressure pressure choice is, and this one actually feels better in my hand than a Glock. And go figure, folks, I carry a Glock. I carry a Glock for a certain reason, and I've gone into that several times. But So the Glock people, they're internet readers, and all, all firearm people are mostly your internet readers, and they're educated by what they see on the internet, and it absolutely cracks me up. So this gun, when it first came out, I think one time somebody dropped it and it has to hit at a certain angle like this on the floor and it had an accidental discharge. Well, all you hear now is from the people that do not have a six hour and see somebody with one that this gun is a piece of junk and it will discharge on its own. Well, folks, I've owned this gun for years. This never discharged on me, ever. And it's not going to discharge. It's a safe gun. Any of these guns you could have an accident with if you're not safe and you don't pay attention to what you're doing. So just because of one bad thing goes out on the internet or gets released out into the press, people go off on them. And mainly it's the ones that have not owned one of these or do not own one of these. If they don't have it, it's bad. Whatever they have at the time is probably the best thing since sliced bread. So we've covered a couple of the, I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible. So you get people that are in the target shooting and they want the most accurate gun. Well, folks, all these guns here are only as accurate as the person operating them. If you can't not operate a tool properly, it's not going to be accurate. And if you, if you're going to buy this very expensive Wilson combat that has been bent dress tested and will shoot half inch groups or one inch groups at 15 yards or however many yards they test them at. Well, you can't expect yourself to do that, especially if you do not train or practice. So is this gun really any more accurate than any other one on here? Probably not. With the average person, even, even a skilled shooter is not going to um, shoot as well as a gun held in a bench rest. So the accuracy really doesn't matter. If you want to talk about accuracy and target shooting, this gun right here, this is a Ruger. This is an old girl right here. This is a Ruger Mark One. You can see right here on it, it's Mark One. This was the original one that they came out with. They used to call it the Ruger Standard, and this is built for target shooting. And if you want me to be honest with you, I can shoot this gun more accurate than any gun on this table right here in front of you this one here if i was to get in a shooting contest with any of you folks watching this and, and these are the guns right here that i had to choose from this is going to be the one i choose now why would people firearm people we we're going to call them not like this gun well it's first of all it's old it's dated it doesn't have a crazy optic on top of it and it's a 22 and 22s are looked down upon by the firearm crowd. Usually the firearm crowd that doesn't really know much about firearms. And they said that a 22 is not an effective round. Well, this gun was built actually for target shooting. It's got a big old heavy bull barrel, and that's what it's for. It's probably the best at what it is made for. I mean, and I'm talking like unbelievable accuracy with this thing. 
and there's no recoil you can follow up i can empty this whole magazine out and probably have a one inch or less group at 15 yards every single time so if you want an accurate gun which one is better here folks this Wilton Combat that's been bench tested and comes with a sight, or this 22 pistol made by Ruger. And I think this one was made in the early 70s, but this is the first generation of these Ruger Mark pistols. Awesome sight, awesome sight picture. Can't ask for anything more. Now you're going to have the revolver crews. <clears throat> revolver people are also crazy. And you're going to have the big rivals. Which one's better? Is it going to be a Smith or is it going to be a Colt? I have them both right here. And you have this Smith right here. And then you get into subcategories of this. This is a K-Frame 66-2. Now, Smith & Wesson people are crazy because they're in the revolver crowd. They're going to look at this gun and say, well, it doesn't have recessed cylinders and it doesn't have a pen barrel. Do they even know why they recess cylinders or have pin barrels? What is it worth? Who cares what it's worth, folks? Who cares? All I know is it's got an exceptional trigger on it, and it shoots very accurate. With it. It's in my hand. It feels very comfortable in there, and it does a great job. Do I think it's any better than any gun on here? No, I think it's exactly equal to every gun on here. Every gun on here has its purpose, and this is an awesome little 357 Magnum that fits in my hand very well. It's very light, very balanced, and everything. Now, when you get into the collector crowd, collector crowds, there's a large following of Colt revolvers, and this is a Colt Python, and this one is a newer one. This is one of the ones that was just released a few years ago in the year 2020. Now, the collector people migrate towards Colt Pythons. They always have. Now, they've always been expensive, but they're, um, they're not investment pieces, folks. And when they stopped making these guns in 1999, all you've heard for 25 years was people bellyache because they haven't made the Colt Python anymore. Well, now they're making them again. And when they came out with this gun, all those people have done is complain about this gun, about how poor it is, about what the poor quality, there's no hand fitting went into this or anything like that. And all they've done is complain. They found every reason not to like this gun. Well, it's very simple. You have a simple solution to it. You just go buy one of the older ones and you're gonna pay for it when you do it because of the crazy wing nut collectors. But folks, there's nothing wrong with this gun. When this gun first came out, it's kind of like that Sig Sauer that I just showed you right here. One or two people had a problem with this cylinder not rotating. And once again, it's a large firearm company with a lot of recognition. It got out on the internet, and all of a sudden now, all of them are bad. <laughs> they're all bad. Well, they're not bad, folks. I've never had that happen. This I've had this for several years. I had them right. Up, I got this right when they first came out. It's never had any problems. It works just as smooth as the old ones. And to tell you the truth, the actual double extra trigger on this thing is actually better than my vintage ones that I have. So is this a good gun? It absolutely is. Now with revolver people, they like their revolvers. And I'm one of those people. I love revolvers. But when you get into the semi-automatic people, they're going to complain about capacity. This thing doesn't hold capacity and it's outdated. Well, folks... I don't think many people are going to carry around this big old two or three pound 357 Magnum revolver as a personal protection thing. And if they do, well, I mean, it's, so be it. But we're not getting into a competition with capacity. This thing holds six rounds. That's what it was designed to do. It's a very smooth working, well-made firearm that shoots very accurate when it's in my hands. It may not shoot well in your hands, but it works well for me or I wouldn't sit alone it. So, collector people basically do not know what they're talking about. There's nothing wrong with this gun. If you wanted a Colt Python and you don't want to spend this crazy amount of money that they command for the older ones, look at one of these because this thing is very well made. There's no hand fitting went into it because modern machine work has caught up with the 1970s and the 1980s when people had to sit there and hand polish and hand fit stuff together. So, great gun. No reason for any collectors to hate on this gun. It works well. Now, we're going to look at this other revolver here. And 
show you this. I have anything in it. Now, this is a real Heinz 57 one. There, I have two Heinz 57 guns on here. I have this hand built 1911 and I have this revolver here. Now, I did a video a little while back on a Colt Trooper that I had restored. Well, this is a lot of no nos with firearm people because, first of all, I restored the thing, had it refinished. Well, you can't do that. <laughs> Just ask the firearm collector people. Then I changed the caliber from 38 Special to 357 Magnum. Well, another big no no. It's probably the wrong caliber. And I put a Colt Python barrel on a trooper, put a set of aftermarket grips. This thing's got negatives all over it, folks. You look, it says Colt Python right here on the side, but it's not. This is a Colt Trooper that had a very bad nickel refinish job done to it. And I bought it for next to nothing, and I turned it into something that I thought was really cool. We changed the hammer in it. It's got a big old wide spur hammer on it like a Colt Python does, but it still retains its firing pin on the hammer. And it's the action's been slicked up to it. It's had a trigger job, and this gun is awesome, man. It is just an extremely awesome gun. Now, it's a revolver, and it's an old revolver. It was made in the 60s, so your people that have stuff like this are not going to like it. And they're going to go off on it and say it's a dated old gun. It's an antique. They call them cowboy guns. Well, it's not, folks. It's a very well-made firearm because it's been around for, you know, it's been here since the 60s. It's been here for 50 years, and it's, it still functions good and all that. These, the books yet to be written on, rather, these are still going to be around in 50 years because they're fairly new. But this is a gun that a lot of people that are in the firearms and certain angles of firearms, 1911 people may not like this because it's not semi-automatic, it's not a 1911. The new polymer striker-fired people aren't going to really like this a lot because it doesn't hold capacity and it's outdated. The people that have this probably really aren't going to like the polymer fired guns as much and bottom line is folks we're all on the same side here there's no reason for anybody to um to go off on what somebody else has there's just no there's just no reason for it you unify and you talk about it and there's just no reason to go down on somebody for what they choose here there's a variety of choices here none of them have anything to do with the other but they all have their place every single one of them and every one of these guns has been covered in any, a lot of my past videos i think i have videos on each single one of these and you can see what all the details are about them if you have any questions on them feel free to ask if i can figure it out i will tell you the answer Anyway, folks, lesson of the day is be mindful of those around you. There's no reason to down anybody for what choices they make. Maybe they don't have the money to have every single firearm they wanted, or maybe they did not have the money to buy the expensive bills in combat, so they went with the Ruger 1911. Still nothing wrong with it. If you put either one of them in either person's hands, they're going to perform the same. Nobody's a bench rest out here. Don't go off on the SIG people, the 320 people, and tell them their firearm's going to discharge. If, they, if that was true, folks, they wouldn't be selling these. The, don't go off on the Glock people because that's what they choose to have. Glocks are good. And you either love them or hate them. And... There's, there doesn't seem to be any middle ground. Don't tell people that their gun's not accurate enough because one of the least expensive guns on this table right here is this little Ruger here. And I promise you it'll run with any gun that any person watching this video has. I will put this up against them any day of the week. I don't care what their handgun is. It's a very accurate target shooting gun. Smith & Wesson people need to calm down on the Colt people and vice versa. It just... It's, it's crazy, folks, what people do these days. But anyway, folks, I've been enough of my soapbox today. I just wanted to show you a little bit of variety here. And everybody just needs to get along. And everybody agrees on one common ground. Firearms are cool. They're very interesting. They're not investments. You're not going to make money on them. You don't need to buy them to try and resell them or anything like that. If you want it, get it, hold on to it, and enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching my video today and you folks have a great day.